Hello everyone and welcome back and today I want to tell you guys about how to synchronize a Synology and Acer Store NAS. Whether you're moving from one brand to the other or you happen to have a network environment that features both of these NAS brands, there are lots of useful things about having two NASs synchronized together. And what you can do in a number of these circumstances is create a multi-stage network backup. So say for example, you've owned a Synology NAS for a while and you saw some of the new Nimbus Store series from Acer Store and you thought, do you know what? I'm gonna grab one of those just to back up over the network or you're someone that wants to move from Acer Store to Synology. It is surprisingly straightforward to create synchronization. And from that, you can also have a bunch of customization options. But without further ado, let me talk you through how to do it. So. There's a few boxes you're going to need to tick early on on both sides. The reason I've got both NASs here split screen, and hopefully this won't be too much of a problem, I might have to just sort of move around these two from time to time, is because there are options you're going to have to enable on both of these NASs. Now, if you intend to go from Synology to Acer Store or Acer Store to Synology, um, a lot of the steps I'm going to show you, it never hurts to do both of these steps on both NASs because it will make things easy in the long term. So first things first, go into your Synology NAS and open up the control panel. From the control panel, go to the file services option. Along the top, you'll see an option that says rsync. It's worth mentioning I am using DSM 6.2. So if DSM 7 has been released, these options may have changed. So in the rsync option, what you need to do is make sure this box is ticked. By default, it will not be ticked. It will also select a default encryption port. Just leave that, you don't need to change it unless you want to muck around with something specific or you have multiple connections on your NAS at once right now, utilizing any of the other connections. Once you've ticked that box, it will also invite you to enable an rsync account. Now you don't have to do this. I would simply because this ensures that the two devices that are communicating are at least protected by a password and it doesn't open the door to anyone taking advantage of it. For me, I've just created a default login for it, but it's very easy to create a default login and you can create different user case scenarios, so different user accounts for different kinds of synchronization. But for now, just create a synchronized thing then all you have to put in is a username and a login. So I just use username and password. There's options down here that let you schedule synchronization and more, but I wouldn't worry too much about those. Let's get the synchronization done. Now, at the same time as this, move over to your Acer Store user interface accessible via the web browser. And from this side, select the option services. From services at the bottom, you've got our sync server. And this is remarkably similar to what we've just done on the Synology. Make sure you enable it and it will also invite you to have a port. By default, it's almost always 873, and it will also invite you to use encryption if you so choose, in case your network is prone to hacks and stuff like that. I'm gonna leave that off for now, but it's up to you if you want to use it. But that means it will encrypt the data going from the Acer store to the Synology or vice versa. It's also worth highlighting that you should create backup modules. What these are are areas of the Acer Store NAS that you want to involve in an R-Sync if you're sending from the Acer Store to the Synology. And this is essentially just a means to create an area. So if we put area, from there we select which folders we want to synchronize over to there. But there's a little bit more information on that later. This creates kind of a profile of R-Sync. But for now, we've already created that one there and it's the public data folder. Click apply. No changes were made anyway. Same thing goes on this side. And now we can talk about how these two different dev devices synchronize independently. Because again, you might be trying to go from the Synology to the Acer Store or the Acer Store to the Synology. From the Synology side, if you head into Hyper Backup, this is a free application that you can download from the App Center and open up that app. And from here, it will ask you, what kind of backup do you want to perform? Now, this tool is largely designed to control and take a and essentially run multiple kinds of backup from localized USB backup to third party cloud, all the way through to NAS to NAS synchronization. One tool to do all of these jobs. 
For now, select rsync copy single version and then click next. From here, it will ask you what kind of synchronization are you running? Is this a Synology synchronization or an rsync compatible server because they don't want to name brands? In this case, it's an rsync compatible server, AKA not a Synology. From there, it will ask you to enter the IP. The IP is this number up here. So we can copy that if we so choose and miss the one off the beginning there, but don't worry. And we've added the IP of our Acer Store NAS. It will ask you if you want to utilize encryption. I'm not on this occasion. And it will ask us to enter login information that we created with that account for the rsync. Now this is the destination that we're doing right now. This is sending data from the Synology to the Acer Store. In the case of the Acer Store, the backup module is what we set earlier on in, let's bring it up on the screen again. Bring that over there. The module was this area here, essentially the folder, the target. So from here, the backup module, once it's scanned it on the local area network, it's found that folder I created, the, the uh, backup module Acer Store. Click next, and from here, it will invite you to select the folders on the Synology NAS that you want to back up. For now, I'll keep it simple and just synchronize the music. I then click next. Synology also has means for you to back up a number of apps as well. I'm not gonna back them up on this occasion, but that might be something you'd be interested in, particularly because some apps have got core important data that needs to be kept in a certain way. And um, surveillance is uh, definitely an area where you want the data to be in the right order and in the right format. Click next. And after this, it's scanning to see if everything's set up correctly. It, you have to name the task. I'm just going to call it rsync copy one. And then from here, you can enable all kinds of options, such as changing the block types of backups, changing if the files are going to be compressed or not. You can choose whether you want files to be deleted upon um, backup. You can say if you want minor data to be backed up, as well as create limitations of bandwidth that stop it eating up all of the available bandwidth in your home or office, slowing everyone's computer down, as well as setting a schedule too. Click apply, and from here, we can then, it formulates and completes that backup. Leave that to run in the background. Now, once again, this is to create a synchronization between the Synology and the Acer Store. Now it's created, it will ask us if we want to run the backup now. I'll say no, just because we want to see the hyper backup layout. From here, when we're ready to back up, we just have to click that button. We created a schedule where it will happen regularly, and after that, it will happen every single day at three in the morning. It's important, I gather for a lot of you, that you'll want to have a backup like this running during the night when no one's there, and therefore you can use as much of the bandwidth as possible. You can add further tasks, restore old tasks and check the logs for tasks that have succeeded or failed. But clicking back up now will begin the synchronization between these two devices, but I'll come back to that later. Now, let's look at backing up our Acer store to the Synology. From here, we need to make our way into the backup and restore option. From here, it will open up this new option with the first option being rsync. From here, click create and we're going to create our new rsync and in this situation we can choose how we want to back up in this case we're saying that we're backing up to an rsync compatible server and we're backing up this nas to another server click next and from here it will ask us to enter that ip this time we've got this new ip over here of the synology we bring that ip there enter it into that box and now it will invite us to add that password um, and a username and password we created much, much earlier in the control panel. In case you forgot, there in file services, it was the one that I created here, the rsync account. So we enter that information. Then we can choose whether we want the whole thing encrypted or not. I'm going to leave it off for now, but that is an option that may be open to you if you're a business user, and then you click next. It now begins checking that that IP indeed has that server in place. It's also checking right now that the rsync username and rsync password are accepted by the Synology NAS. 
It is now asking me to select which folders on the Acer store I want to transfer over. For now, let's say we're going to transfer the transcoding file and the public file. It will also ask if you want to do one-on-one -on -one folder uh, synchronization, and that's if you want to have a long-running synchronization in the background. I'm not going to enable it on this occasion. Clicking Next will then ask you the destination folder, where you want the data to go to on the Synology NAS. And right now, it's loading up the full list of folders that are available under that rsync account we created on the Synology, and we choose where we want these files to go. For now, I'm going to select the video folder. I then click Next, and it will ask us if we want to do a backup now or scheduled backup. Let's do a scheduled backup at 2.13 a.m. every day. And we'll have it starting daily, starting at that time. We click Next, and then it will ask us about some configuration options that we want to have put in place to make sure changes happen when we want them and how we want them. With bandwidth limitation being something you've already known, with resuming of file transfer in the event of something going wrong, such as a network conflict or an IP conflict, and other options too. One that I particularly like, and one that we didn't really touch on earlier on, was to do with incremental backups. Backups come in a number of ways, and wholesale backups can be large. And if you are backing up the same folders, volumes, and more every single day, chances are a large percentage of that storage is the same data. Incremental backups are backups when backups are done bit by bit. Another form of backups is known as diff backups. And with diff backups, it will only back up the differences, only backing up the changes to file formats. But without further ado, let's create our job on the Acer store. It's asking us to confirm the details on screen and we'll move forward to the completion of this backup job. So there's our backup job and we can now choose whether we want to back up now. The same goes on the other side for our Synology backup task on Hyper Backup. And this has been how to create back backups between um, um, our synchroni synchronization, I should say, between Synology and Acer Store NAS in both directions if we so choose. So if you are thinking of buying a new NAS right now, I hope this video helps you back up the data on your existing NAS to your new NAS, or allows you to buy a budget NAS to back up your core powerhouse NAS in future. But without further ado, I'm gonna click back up now on both of these. I'll leave these to run their backups there in the background, and I'm gonna wrap things up now. I'm gonna be going through synchronization of different NAS brands over the coming weeks to show you guys just how easy it is and how all of these NASs can all work together in perfect harmony. But I'm gonna see you guys on the next video. Click like if you enjoyed this. And if it helped you, definitely click like. Click um, uh, subscribe. There you go, sorry, I've been talking for a long time now. Click subscribe if you wanna stay tuned on this channel to all the new things that are coming out in the world of NAS. And click the bell to be more notified of relevant content to you. I'll see you guys on the next video.